Hey, hey, my lovely goal getters. Welcome to the Moms Making Money Show. I'm your host, Amy Peterson, business mentor and confidence coach for the emerging boss mom. It's my mission to help amazing women just like you up level yourself and your business because you are meant for more than wiping boogers and folding laundry. I'm also a wife, mother, urban farmer, influencer, green juice enthusiast, and an unapologetic lover of cowboy boots. I can't wait to help you grow your business by sharing my tips, tricks, proven business strategy, experience, and incredible guests. Hang on tight and enjoy the show. Today's episode is brought to you by our friends and educational partners, HoneyBook. HoneyBook is an amazing service for creatives, visionaries, coaches, and business owners just like us. And the best part about HoneyBook, they're super easy to use, they're so super affordable, and they even come with a contract template specified to the type of industry that we're in that we're free to use and send to our clients. So basically what HoneyBook does is it helps automate the onboarding process. So I use this process for any one-on-one clients. I use this process for my mastermind clients. I use this process for events. This is something I use for everything other than like a self-study course. Anything that I want them to be able to have a payment plan for and also to, you know, if there's any kind of contractual agreement. So a lot of times you'll want somebody to sign a contract for your terms of use, your terms and conditions, and the terms of your agreement with one another. So this makes it super easy. So when you get somebody to sign up with you and they're like, heck yeah, I'm all in, where do I sign up? Where do I start? You just get their email address, you enter in their custom program, or you can save a template if you have one that's always the same price, always the same contract, and you just basically fill in their information, fill in the price, create their custom payment plan if they are paying in full or if they're paying weekly, bi-weekly, monthly, speci- like on specified dates, whatever that looks like for that particular client, you send it over once and what it does is it sends them a proposal so they can see everything beautifully lined out. Then they can sign the contract and make their first payment. It's so simple. They can do it from their email box or from their phone in a matter of moments and then everything is good to go. You're in compliance, you're all you know ready to go with your contract and everything is started right away. You can also set up follow-up emails, you can also set up what they call brochures and you make beautiful introductions to your programs, to your courses and to whatever it is that you have to offer. And these can be customized in so many different ways so that they are on brand with you And the cool thing about HoneyBook is they have offered all of you guys 50% off for the entire first year. So this is one of the best bargains I think I've ever encountered. So to get this, you can actually start with a free trial, no credit card required, which I love. And, um, but trust me, you'll love HoneyBook. So then if you're ready to get started, you just sign up. So if you want to get that 50% off, make sure you use our code. It's in the show notes but it's share.honeybook.com forward slash Amy, A-M-I-E, 935. So just click back over into the show notes if you want that, or it is share.honeybook.com forward slash Amy, 935, and that will secure your 50% off an already amazing low price for the entire first year of your subscription. I hope that you guys have a wonderful experience with HoneyBook. I know that I have. It's been a staple of my business and it's been such a joy to use. All right, everybody. I have the one and only Brooke Allison. She is not only my friend, but she is also a great, wonderful, amazing mind shift coach and achievement strategist. And we have a ton of fun <laughs> every time we get together. And so I just knew I had to bring her on and share her and her laughter and all of her super high vibe energy with all of you guys. So without any further ado, I'm going to turn it over to you, Brooke. Tell us a little Yay. bit about yourself and how you got on this path. 
Uh, okay, this is such a good thing, but I'm gonna give you the juicy details, okay? So it goes back a little bit, but yay, I'm so excited to be here. Thanks for having me. Like she said, I'm Brooke Allison, mind shift coach and an achievement strategist. So now I get to say that I help people scale to six figures by building a business and a mindset that is fiercely unstoppable, which is so much fun, but it didn't always start this way, right? So I, I feel like I have to go back a few little bits to talk about how I got to where I am today. And it goes back to, you know, when I graduated college um, and I, I have an art degree. So I've always been super artsy, always been super creative. I thought after school, I'd get a job like that, like a snap. Like I was like, oh, I'm so good at what I do. I have so much experience. And I did not. <laughs> I did not get a job. It was real rough. Um, I applied for five to 10 jobs every single day for months for months. And that's not an exaggeration. I am not like pulling numbers out of my butt. That was the literal truth of what I was doing. And I was getting really frustrated and beaten down and it so happened. So I was working in retail. I ended up getting promoted so many times that I remember being like, do not promote me anymore. Like I do not want to get stuck in this retail job. And <laughs> I don't, it's so funny how doors open when you least expect it. And I had one of my college friends reach out to me and she was like, Hey, I'm working on a goal to earn a free car. Do you think you could help me? And I was like, sure. <laughs> like, what does that mean? And so, um, I was really excited to hear more about this. And that was my first business endeavor. So she told me about this opportunity. It was with a network marketing company and I heard you can earn extra money. And I was like, I need extra money. And this sounds awesome. And so I started my first business when I was 22. And I'm so grateful for that because that allowed me, that opportunity allowed me to start dreaming again. And I realized, or I already knew I didn't want to stay in retail, but I kind of felt like, why am I still doing this? I don't want to live in St. Louis forever. I want to go experience life. And it honestly gave me the courage to move across the country. So at the time, I was actually with my ex-boyfriend and we moved together. So we moved across the country together. That was almost four years ago now, which is crazy to think about. Um, and unfortunately, our relationship, it was never really, really great to begin with. It was, I just kind of thought it was, um, oof, I don't even know how to explain it. I just thought we were really dramatic people. Like, I just thought, like, this is just what love looks like. It's just really dramatic. I didn't understand how unhealthy and how, how abusive it really was until we moved across the country. And all of a sudden, I was isolated. And it just completely drastically changed. So I found myself, after moving across the country, I quit. I literally made five life-changing decisions at one time. Apparently, I'm really good at doing that. Too many life-changing decisions. But I finally got the courage because I realized how abusive the situation was to leave, to leave the situation and, and go out on my own, even though I was in a brand new part of the world. And, um, I'm so grateful that I did that because if it wasn't for me going through this adversity, if it wasn't for me going through this huge challenge, I would not have a business today because I remember those days that I couldn't get out of bed thinking that that was the love that I deserve, thinking that this is all there is. Like, I don't understand how I got to this place in my life. And I remember thinking, this is not who you're meant to be, Brooke. And I remember that very powerfully. And so I dove into my personal development massively. And I already had done a little bit of personal development before because of my network marketing business. But I just like full blown dove head into heels, like all into it. And I was so I became the most confident version of me possible. And it's incredible. Like people see me today and they're like, Brooke, your energy is contagious. Your confidence is so inspiring, but they don't understand that not even just a few years ago, it was non-existent. That I was just in a really abusive relationship. And to this day, that was my last relationship. That's still on my checklist of, I have not been in a relationship since. And so it's one of those things that I had to go through that to be able to overcome it, to have the path that I have right now. So from there, I threw myself into my business. I worked massively, you guys. I was a hustler. I had way more month than money, majority of my life. <laughs> I worked really hard. Um, and I, fast forward to about two years ago when I found the coaching world. Now, prior to this, I had been praying for a new opportunity. I had been praying. I said, I know I am meant for something more than where I am now. I'm meant to do something more. I don't know what that is. I'm also not meant to be this broke. 
because at that time I was working four part-time jobs. I had my full-time um, MLM business, my network marketing business. I was running that full-time, working four part-time jobs in addition to that. And I was on food assistance. I couldn't afford my bills. It was, a, it was rough. I have never been so embarrassed about my adult financial situation. And I knew that was not how I was supposed to be living. Ever since the age of 21, I knew I'd be debt free by the time I was 30. I just had no, obviously at that point, I had no idea how that was going to happen, right? Like I was like, I don't know. <laughs> um, and I found the coaching world and it was one of those things that I was like, this is it. This is it. This is what I meant to do. This is what, this is what I've been looking for. And honestly, I, I started it two years ago in July, which is so exciting to say. And I ran and things just developed from there. And when I first started, I started strictly with confidence. And then I expanded to business. And I actually really missed helping people scale their businesses in my network marketing business. I, I missed that achievement. I missed helping people feel so empowered because they are achieving the results they want. And um, I mean, fast forward to, to now life. I mean, it's so cool to say this. I literally have accomplished every single goal I set for myself in a year and a half. And my, my first full year, um, fiscal year, I had six, uh, six figures in sales. So I had 100,000 in sales. And then my first full year of business from January to December was a six figure year. And now we're scaling to multiple six figures. So it's absolutely it been an incredible journey. I'm also traveling the world. I'm currently in London as I'm <laughs> recording this episode. But I feel like your past, my part of my past is, is such a vital situation for this, for the story of where I am today, because without those things, without overcoming those obstacles, I wouldn't be here with this business. And so that was my, my little nuggets in a short, but like, okay, here's everything. <laughs> <laughs> no, I love it because I feel like so many people feel like, I feel like so many people can relate to that where they're like, yeah. right now I'm like right in the struggle bus, or maybe I'm driving the struggle bus, or maybe it ran me over. Like, yeah. and I feel like yep. <laughs> that gives people so much like, oh my gosh, if she can do it, I can do it. And that's exactly. like going back. That's the whole reason why I started this show is I wanted to showcase so many different kinds of women, you know, so we've had network marketers on here mm -hmm. and most of them have experienced this little chatterbox that's sitting on my lap with me. Um, <laughs> um, we've had network marketers, we've had business coaches, we've had attorneys, we've had all kinds of women because I wanted to show women that no matter what your, what those nudges are of what mm -hmm. your dreams are, it's possible. And you're like such living proof that you can take a really bad situation and turn it basically into solid gold if you put your heart and your mind to it. Yeah, 100%. And it is one of those things. I mean, I love the saying, and I mean, I didn't make this up. I wish I did. But through adversity comes champions. Through adversity comes champions. And fiercely unstoppable, that's part of my brand because that just runs through my veins. Like, no matter what, I'm going to keep running after what I want and where I want to go and this mission that I have. That's a non-negotiable. Um, and now it's like, you know, it's, it's really fun to teach others to be able to do that as well. And just giving people permission. That's also why I will never stop talking about my income wins. I like so many people get so pissed in the online space and they're like, oh, I don't care about your 20 K month, your 30 K month, your 10 K month, blah, blah, blah. And I'm like, I'm never going to stop sharing it because if people weren't sharing theirs, when I first started, I would have never even envisioned having a $10,000 cash month. I thought that was for like lawyers and doctors. I went to art school. Okay. Right. Like, <laughs> but I will never stop sharing it because you are meant to be a belief barrier breaker for those who don't think it's possible for them. And then you show it's possible because yes, I mean, I think I'm pretty awesome. I'm not gonna lie. I think I'm pretty cool, but I mean, we all poop the same. Like <laughs> we are literally the same. If I can do it, you can do it too. A hundred percent. Absolutely. Absolutely. So I know that you had a lot of like trials and tribulations that were on your journey. Yes. What do you feel like you really had to overcome in order to make that shift? I know you had to let go of like the boyfriend and some of the other things, but what was it inside of you that you were like, all right, bam, this is, this is the thing that like that, that pivot Mm -hmm. So, and, and I think the important thing to stress here is that it's not just the one time, right? It, it happens multiple times. I mean, even just this last um, November, 
I had a, a huge, I had a huge breakthrough that I had to get through because I was in a massive car accident five days before moving across the country. Then I got a call 24 hours before saying they don't have a truck for me. Like I had so much shit I had to deal with and it really derailed me. And in fact, and I think it's really important to talk about my income took an $8,000 dip that month. And it's, it's, it's knowing that even though that happened, I got back up, you know, and then I had like $30,000 in 10 days, which is really fun. You know, like things like that, like that can totally happen. And so the biggest thing here is to remember is sometimes we need to cultivate that rock bottom. So we break through, you don't always have to have a rock bottom to break through, but if you're going to have a rock bottom, you might as well you might as well break through. And I think it's always remembering who you are to your core. Like if you asked yourself the question, what do I know is true for me? And what do I know is true about me? Well, I know deep down, I know I'm meant to be a millionaire. I have no idea what that looks like. I have no idea how I'm supposed to get there, but I know that is what I'm meant for. I know I'm meant to impact the masses. I know that I have a message to share. I know that I'm incredibly awesome. I know I have a lot of knowledge. It's like, what do I know is true about me? Well, so when you know those things, then nothing else really matters. So it's like, I'm not saying that things don't suck sometimes because they really do. And I have days where I have had straight couch days and I have days where I am just crying my eyes out, right? The, like, <laughs> um, but um, honestly, it's being an entrepreneur, the hardest part is the six inches between your ears. And when we can master that and when we can get that to a point where we're like, okay, I know what I meant to do. And having that vision of what you know is meant for you, when you have these triumphs and tribulations, eventually it hurts so bad that you're like, I am not meant to stay here. And then you get out of it. Honestly, you always get out of it. Sometimes it's good to have those rock bottom moments. There was a time in my life that I welcomed obstacles. I don't know why I wanted to manifest obstacles, but I welcomed them openly. But it wasn't a bad idea because then I just became a better version of me because I overcame things faster. Well, and they do say the only place that you can go from rock bottom is up. So I think that's 100%. So true. Yes. yes. You could only go up. I actually have, um, this, that's part of my tattoo. So I got this tattoo. It's like an arrow on my arm. And I feel like it's just part of my brand now, to be honest with you, but it lives on me. So it, it's there. Um, and a part of the reason why I got this arrow tattoo was the saying that when you feel like life is pulling you backwards, think of it like an arrow. You have to pull the arrow back to be able to shoot it to the bullseye. And so it's this idea of keep aiming, keep going, keep shooting, keep going, right? The biggest problem that I see is that people stumble over a rock one time and then they quit. And I'm just like, okay, well, like I said, you can, you can go quit. That's free will. You have the choice to do that. But why are you doing this in the first place? What is the bigger mission, the bigger vision? Absolutely. Yeah. What was that initial? Yes. Like what made you say that initial? Yes. So yeah. I wanted to kind of touch back on, because I feel like this is so true. And I feel like this yeah. is going to affect every single person who is an entrepreneur or who listens yeah. to this podcast. Talking about money, like I remember I sent out an email one time and it was like, let's talk about sex. Haha, ha, just kidding. Like, let's talk about something even more controversial. Let's talk about money. Yes. Um, so yeah. I've had family members talk to me about like, oh, you said you had a $17,000 month and you had this and da, 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 like, and it's almost like a negative thing. So my thought mm -hmm. about that is that comes completely from employee mindset. You don't talk mm. about what your hourly rate is. You don't talk about what your bonus is. You don't talk about any of those things. It's like such taboo. So I feel like that is what so many people still have in their minds of, you know, money talk is off limits. It's none of your business. Do you feel like that was kind of part of where some of those people were coming from? You know, what's so funny is I, even through my childhood, I never understood why we weren't supposed to talk about money. I never understood that. I'm also a really big rebel and a rule breaker, if I'm being honest with you. So um, it's one of those things that I, I kind of just don't care what other people think. Like, I really don't. Like, if you're going to be upset about me um, talking about money, then delete me, please. Because and it's not even like I only talk about money all damn day. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> but, but it's one of those things that it's like, okay, I'm going to share with you my wins. One, because I want someone to celebrate this. But two, I want other people to know they can do this. Because like, like I said, 
I, this is a huge, huge part of my vision. When I first ever started my business, you guys, this was the 4th of July that I told my mom this two years ago. I told my mom, I said, mom, I'm starting this business. And she already knew I was starting this business. And I told her, I said, when I have my first $10,000 cash month, I'm taking you on a vacation. I'm taking you on a trip. And she was like, okay. And, pro- and I don't really know to this day what she was thinking in her head. Okay. She was probably like, oh, that sounds nice, Brooke. You've been on food assistance and broke as shit for the past four years. But you know, and she never said anything like that. I can only imagine this is me imagining what's going through her head. Um, <laughs> I think it was more of like, a, oh, that sounds nice. And so in my six month of business, I had a $17,000 cash month. That was my first ever 5k month. That was my first ever 10k month. Like, Things can happen quick, you guys, if you believe it can. And so I remember, you know, talking to her and saying like, hey, do you, where do you want to go? <laughs> and I ended up training her on a trip to Maui. And we went to Maui last, last April and it was so much fun. And, um, and she actually came out to see me, you know, when I've been traveling the world and everything too. She was just in London with me and we went to Paris. And I think that's such a beautiful vision, but I never would have thought that was possible if I didn't see other people doing it. Ever. Right. There's this whole, you know, they talk about like the law of attraction and they talk about mm-hmm. all these things. I feel like also too something that's just as strong, maybe even more strong than the law of attraction is the power of suggestion. Oh, 100%. So I've always been suggested that because I went to art school, I was going to be really broke for the rest of my life. Yeah. The starving artist. <laughs> it's Why like a thing. Ever become it is a thing. Why is that a thing? <laughs> Damn it. We do so much work and we like change lives through art. Like, but you know, what's so funny is deep down, I've always known I was going to have a lot of money one day. Uh, deep down, I've always known that I was probably going to be the breadwinner in the family. Like, I don't even know why I, I thought those things, you know, and I don't even have a husband, let's be honest. Like, I mean, I'm hoping manifesting come to my life. Like, um, <laughs> but <laughs> It's one of those things that it it is very, very true. But at the age of 21, I remember vividly thinking, I'm going to be debt free by the time I'm 30. I'm going to be debt free by the time I'm 30. I just told you my lifespan in a couple of years. That made no sense for so long, but that was something that I just held in my heart that I felt was true, right? So then we go back to the question, what do you know is true for you? What do you know is meant for you? And now it's more so my goal is to be a millionaire by the time I'm 30. It's not even just that free, but I'm talking millionaire status, right? Hell yeah. So I, it's true though. It's the power of suggestion, but I don't know why people don't talk about money and it's such a weird thing to talk about, but I just, ugh, I'm all about breaking the rules. So <laughs> however I can break them, I'm like, all right, we're going to talk about this today, you know? So I feel like, you know, with the whole money thing, it's, you know, I do feel like it comes back to like that employee mindset, you know, like don't talk about these things and it's nobody's business. And, you know, part of that is because, you know, there's not like the whole equal pay. Cause like my husband, he's union. So everybody makes the same amount of money, like Mm -hmm. based on their, you know, their position, but that's not the place. That's not the case for most workplaces. So for Mm -hmm. like, for us, it's like, we talk about it, like, okay, my husband and his coworkers, they talk about it. They're like, oh, what are, what's the pay scale now? What's this? What's that? And it's no secret. And nobody is jaded because this guy might be making more than that guy. So that's kind of a neat thing. Um, you know, as far as that goes, maybe I never felt that because I was never in a nine to five. Yeah. Maybe, maybe that's why, because I was feeling pretty like a badass when I was making $20 an hour nanny. And like, I was like, yeah, I feel good. Like I would not accept anything less than that because of my experience that I had with children. And so that always felt really good. Like when I was making that kind of money, um, I was never afraid to talk about it. Now, when it comes to money, money stories and money characters, I'm a total avoider as well. I'm like, a, I don't know, it'll all work out. Like, I don't know what's happening in my bank account. Even to this day, you guys, like, it's not even that I don't have the money, but sometimes my account overdrafts because I didn't put the right money in the right account. Like, that's just my life. Like, and so it's, it's learning what kind of, you know, person you have. And I think that people who don't share about their money and like, here's the thing. I share about my money, not for me. I share it for other people to let them know it's possible. This is not for me to be like, hey, celebrate with me. Come cheer me on. It's to show you, hey, listen, I'm going to shatter a belief that you have right now that that could never be for you. Because if I can go to art school and graduate with over $100,000 while I'm in debt and, 
and know and believe I'm going to be debt free. And that's not even to mention my credit card, you guys. Like, um, but no one believe that I'm going to be debt free and hit $17,000 cash months and 30 K in sales in 10 days. Like to be able to do these things, I have to share. I have to, it's my, it's my calling because I need people to know that I literally was on food stamps two years ago. I feel like a lot of people, like if you don't give people that, I'd hate to use the word hope, but if you don't give them that hope, you don't give them that, that something to look forward to, then, 100%. you know, you're, you're not going to, I guess, so, you know, the doctors and the lawyers, they have that appeal and that, that kind of luster of when you grow up, you've got to go to college and you should be a doctor. You should be a lawyer because they are typically wealthy and it just mm -hmm. has that, that persona it's known, right? You don't yeah. think about how many people you think you're going to attract when you're like, you should get a job and be broke. <laughs> like, <laughs> Yeah. Yeah. You know no, I mean? it's so true. And I think that for me, I've always been a big dreamer and I've always been the person that says, I'm not going to, I'm going to follow my passion. I'm going to follow my dream. And I don't really care like what other people say about it. Like I'm going to do what I want to do. And mm -hmm. I mean, that's part of the reason why I'm traveling the world alone. Do I want to be traveling the world alone? No, preferably I'd be traveling with someone, but I am unavailable to wait for something to happen in my life to live the life that I desire. Like, I'm, I might be brave. People keep telling me I'm brave. Oh, you're so brave. I can't believe you go out to dinner by yourself. And I'm like, oh my God, get out more. Like, it's, you're not going to die. I promise the place will not catch fire. Like, you will be okay. But it's right. like one of those things that it's like, I'm unwilling to wait for someone to live my life. And we, I think that's how we need to activate more belief in ourselves because I think we forget, we take for granted that we are alive today, that we have literally air breathing through our lungs and our heart is beating and our legs work and we can walk and, and we are alive and we can see. And why wouldn't you want to go celebrate and do these things? Why would you not go after your dream if you know it's meant for you? You know? I think so many people sell themselves short because they think like, Oh, a dream, you know? And then there's that mm -hmm. whole like Disney thing, you know, about a dream. Oh, oh that's not oh. realistic. Oh. Yeah. And it's all that. a fairy tale and Oh, well it, it might've happened for broker. It might've happened for Amy, but it can't happen for me. The mm -hmm. reason that that is, is because you haven't done that work to say that it can happen for you and, yes. you, know, and you haven't put those things into place. Yes. And I think that people need to understand, okay, here's the deal. Okay. Yes. I had a six figure year, my first full year of business. Now, some people have passed me up and had six year years before their full year. Like, I don't care. Right. People have gone slower than me. It doesn't matter. But I remember believing that, okay, this year is going to be a six figure year. I had, you guys, I literally in 2017 made $8,000 the entire year, the entire year. Like the, <laughs> I had no idea how that was going to work out. So we also have to remember that we don't need to know how it's going to work out. We just need to know that it's meant for us and go after it 110%. My goal this year is 300,000. That still means that I need to over double my income. I have no idea how that's going to work out, but I do believe it's still possible. It's still 100% possible. Magical things happen all the time. And in business, I believe it's a numbers and a magic game. Okay. We got to do the work. You got to have the numbers, but you also got to believe in the magic. You got to believe this is possible for you because if you don't have the belief that it's possible for you, if you're still stuck in the mindset of, well, that's not actually realistic then you're not going to achieve it. That's what's going to be proven true for you. Our brain always wants to be right. It's a stubborn asshole. It, it just is. wants to be right all the time. <laughs> well, and the truth is, if you don't believe it, how are you going to sell somebody else on your belief? Like if you don't believe it, nobody else exactly. will. Exactly. Exactly. And if you don't believe in what you do, then you're not going to sell. And if we don't sell in business, then we don't get to where we want to go. You know, 100%. Well, I feel like that's the difference between a business and a charity or the, a business and yeah. a hobby. And you have to exactly. decide what is it that you actually want? Do you want a exactly. business and you need to yes. treat it like a real business? Like, a, you know, you got to pay your taxes. You got to do all the things and you got to put mm -hmm. out your open sign. You got to like, let people know like, Hey, I'm open. Do people even know what you offer? If people cannot look at your personal profile and say, okay, this is what they do. There is something wrong. There is something wrong. Yes. Here. 
know what you do, what you offer. If they don't know, then what? You're not really doing a good job. It's no wonder you don't, you're not hitting what your goals. Like people come to me all the time and they're just like, I don't understand why I'm not signing clients. And I said, okay, honey, well, let's look at this. Like what's actually happening here? When was the last time you actually sold something? And you know, I think that's a big taboo too. People always think of the the old smelly like car salesman that just wants to like, hey, you know, like <laughs> rope you into some kind of a deal. I don't know why we ever felt so bad about that. I think it's just the icky connotation. But, you know, when we think about sales, sales is just selling. It actually derives from a word that means to serve. And if you are not selling, then you are not serving. And then if we are not serving, then we are not living out the purpose we are meant to live and sharing our message that we're meant to share. I look at it like this and I use this analogy a lot because I think everybody I know loves pizza or at least likes it <laughs> is if you go to a pizza place, it doesn't matter if the owner's behind the counter or the teenage kid who's got the part-time high school job or whatever, mm -hmm. they have zero guilt, zero shame, zero hesitation in taking your money for that pizza or salad or soda yeah. or whatever you're buying. They don't have any qualm about being like, all right, this is what we have for sale. Oh, by the way, would you like to add some hot wings? Zero, zero, zero shame in that. It's just like McDonald's. Okay, I, I use the same example, but I, I usually say McDonald's. If they, if you go through and they say, hey, do you want fries with that? And you say no, do you think they're going to get butthurt about your no? No, they're going to be like, okay, well, the next person probably will. Like yeah. they don't take it personally. That's another big thing too. Why are you taking these yes. no's personally? Because a no doesn't mean a no forever. It just means a no for right now. Like it's just not right now. And so what I always tell myself and my clients, what is for you does not pass you. And when you build the belief system on what is for you does not pass you, then you have nothing to worry about because what is for you will not pass. So that's what people need to realize and remember is that you are capable of creating wealth in an instant, in a moment, but you've got to believe how long does it take for someone to say yes? Yeah. A second, a second. All it takes is one. All it takes is one and not getting butt hurt about the others, honestly. Yeah. Being unemotionally attached. So it's super funny because in the beginning, I didn't do this. I was super like, oh my gosh, she said no. Like, what did I do wrong? And, you know, I would let that fear and that mm -hmm. self-doubt kind of creep in. And, and I had to shift that. And now it's kind of like I was telling one of my clients, I was like, yeah, I don't actually remember even the name of the last person who I talked to about it. You know, we talked, I talked to her on the phone mm -hmm. and this is really bad. Like I probably should remember their name. Like, but I don't like, it was like, they were mm -hmm. a no. And so I didn't invest a lot of emotion because I saved that emotion and that time and all of my energetic focus for my paying clients and for the people who belong in my groups. Exactly. And, and I don't want to like sugarcoat this and say that it isn't hard sometimes. Right. And I, I'm not going to say like, oh my gosh, I, sometimes I've gotten nose after nose after nose. And sometimes it does feel defeating. And sometimes it does feel sad. And sometimes it does suck. I am going to like, I'm going to be real raw and open. That's all I always yes. promise to be. And it, it does, but that's when we have to realign with what we know is true for us and what we know we are meant for. Because when we can realign with that vision, it's almost like this is the perfect example. Thank you, art school. Okay, if you've ever painted anything in your entire life, this is a beautiful example, or you can relate it to anything, I don't care, or go make a painting because then you'll understand. All right, when we are too close to the painting, eventually you're not really sure what the next step is. You don't know if you need to add in some highlights. You don't know if you need to put in some more shadows or bring in some more color. You don't know what the contrast looks like because you're literally right in front of it. But there were so often that I had to put my painting on the other side of the room and get a further perspective to know the next step. And business is the exact same way. You've got to pull yourself out. If you, were, if you put yourself 100 feet away from your business and look at it from a full circle, what would be your next step then? We got, we're too close. We're too close half the time. And we got to zoom out. I feel like that sometimes about like my copy, like I could get in there or even sometimes my own mindset work. Like I could get in there with a client. We could have like massive breakthroughs. It just like comes spewing out. You're probably mm -hmm. the same way, but then it's kind of like you're, you sit down to write your own copy or you sit down to like do certain things and you're like, Hmm, I'm just having like this total block. <laughs> yes. You're like, <laughs> 
Oh, I feel, I feel, I have had the most realist realizations traveling the world. So I feel like that, like I said, you guys, that happens at all levels. Like you are not alone in this. And that's why it's so important to write when you can and when you're inspired. And actually like really honestly, you guys, you need to dedicate yourself to an hour to 30 minutes doing this. Now, here's the thing. You could go on a hike spend 30 minutes sitting down and then being inspired there. It doesn't matter where you are. I sometimes write content when I'm waiting for food at a restaurant because I'm so inspired there. You don't have to literally sit down on your computer and do this work. You can do it anywhere. And I think that's one of the most beautiful lessons I've learned recently. But that's why you got to write when you are inspired. You got to jot down those notes because those times that you do go through those ruts and you go through the obstacles and let's just be honest, life freaking happens all of the time then you can reuse and repurpose. I yes. just had one of my clients the other day. I, I had a post that um, my, my VA posted for me. Um, that's, just, that's what's fun when you build a bigger business. You know, you can have people help you. Yay! Um, and so funny, she was like, I feel like this was based off of our conversation yesterday. And I was like, actually, I wrote this like seven months ago. But it always comes back around at the exact moment that someone needs to hear it. And that's a belief system that I actually instilled in myself that my copy, my content, my words, they actually last forever. There is no expiration on them and someone can read them at the exact moment they're supposed to and know that I am the answer, that I am going to help them get to the next level of income, to the unstoppableness, to to the six figures, et cetera, just based off of the content that I wrote and it could have been months ago. Yeah. Good content is always good content. That's kind yes, of the way I look exactly. at it. Like, <laughs> repurpose that shit. Like, make it easy on yourself. <laughs> yes. Yes. I love that. Um, I could definitely sit here and talk with you all day. Yes. And I love this. But tell us really quick, I know you're going to have a free gift for everybody, so you guys can just swipe up and grab the link to that. But tell us where they can find you, like all the places. Mm, yes, of course. Oh my gosh, this is such an exciting question because I'm like, I have all the things. So I, of course, love my podcast these days. So that's called Fiercely Unstoppable if you're not already listening to it. Um, I also have a really booming Facebook group, Fiercely Unstoppable Entrepreneurs, as well as my personal page. And my Instagram, but I will give you all the links for that so that you can like send them that way. But um, I just love, I love social media. I love showing up. I love being visible. I love saying, come follow me on my travels, you guys. I'm, I'm still going to some pretty cool places. So um, yeah, all the places. <laughs> yes, your travels have been amazing. I'm like watching you. I'm like, oh, she's in London today. And where she going tomorrow? I love it. Awesome. <laughs> yes, thank you. I know it's so funny because it's like, I feel like I've been so many places lately that it's, it's a blessing, but it's also like, Oh, okay. I need like a minute to breathe. Like, you know, but it, but it is super fun sharing my experiences and sharing these beautiful places with people if they can't get here themselves yet. So I absolutely love it. <laughs> well, and there again, power of suggestion. Maybe you're sharing a picture of something that nobody knew existed. And from that, they're going to be like, all right, Brooke white hair. I saw her picture and I have to have to go there. Absolutely. Yes. And it's 100% possible for you. If you see someone else doing it, that means it's, it's possible for you too. And I think the biggest thing to remember is that when you want something, when you desire something, that's on your heart for a reason. Like, I don't believe God and the universe make mistakes. I, I believe that they put it on your heart because it's meant for you, not to trick you, not to make you feel bad, not to make you feel guilty that you haven't achieved it yet, but to show you that this is 100% meant for you. Now, you just need to listen to those intuitive nudges, do the work, and have the belief, hold the faith, activate that faith when it just sure as hell does not look like it's going to work out and know that it's still, it's going to come. Whether it's on your timeline or not, it's going yeah. to come. Well, yeah. And you know, even if you want to think about it kind of like entrepreneurship is still work. It's still kind of like in a way having a job. But even when you go to a nine to five job and you've got a boss who is telling you what to do and whatever and deciding how much money you're going to make, there are still days at work where it's hard. There are still days at work when it's not that easy. The same is true for entrepreneurship. There are some days when you really have to just buckle down and put in a ton of like actual work and creation. And then there are days where it just flows and it's fun and it's easy and it's light exactly. and in London. Or <laughs> yep. 
Exactly. Exactly. And it's going with the flow and knowing that everything is unfolding perfectly, exactly as it should. And, and figuring out, okay, if, if I'm feeling a roadblock here, why is that? What's going on? Is there a fear that's stopping me? Is there some old belief that I still haven't let go of? And knowing that there's never any judgment for where you are. It's okay exactly where you are. It's just loving yourself, celebrating the heck out of your life and the things you've accomplished and continuing to move towards what you know is meant for you always and forever. Yes. Yes. So on that note, because I feel like we're like on this, like up, up swift of, I don't think up swift is a word, but go with me here. <laughs> um, like, tell us like one, like must know, must have tip for our listeners before we hop off. Mm. The biggest thing that I see between my clients who do massive success very, very fast. And my clients who maybe take a little bit longer is the fact that they believe and they're unwilling to let anything but what they want happen. And so it's building that grit and the tenacity and knowing that and keeping with the mindset that what I know I want, what I desire is a hundred percent meant for me, but knowing that you can achieve it. So I want to leave you guys with exactly how to build new belief systems and how to make this something that you're like, I don't necessarily believe that just yet, but I, I eventually you're going to be like, I know that's true about me because I am freaking awesome. So here's how belief systems work. Okay. So I'm sure, especially a lot of you are mamas over here, um, you have been to the water park with your children, okay? So if you go to the water park, there's usually that big tub of water that gets filled up and eventually it topples over and everybody says, yay, water, okay? Your belief system exactly like that. So when you start building a belief and maybe it's, um, um, I am worthy of massive compensation. Right now, you might not believe that. Maybe you don't believe that you're a money magnet. So you can always change the word to I am becoming. I am becoming. I am shifting into. I am attracting. So you can always shift to where you do believe it. So here's what happens though, is your thought process is almost like the empty bucket. Okay, so right now it's the empty bucket. But the more you start to show yourself the evidence that that is actually true. Oh my God, I just got $10 in the mail or I just found a penny on the ground or someone just randomly bought my meal for me. That's so cool. Or of course someone just paid me $10,000. Amazing, right? The more you show yourself that and you start to tell yourself it over and over and over again, there is power in repetition. Whatever people say, it is 100% true. So if you continue, that eventually builds and builds and builds and it fills up your bucket, your bucket will tip over and then that will be true about you. That is how you build new belief systems every single day of your life. And I promise you, if you can believe in what you are doing and if you can believe in your vision and your mission and what, what you want, if you can believe that that is meant for you, it 100% is, but you've got to continue to grow these new beliefs that almost become a support system for your goals rather than the negative beliefs that say you can't have that, that that's not possible for you because it 100% is. Everything else is a lie. So the cool thing is, is that you can achieve anything you want. You just got to start from the empty bucket, fill it up, and then it will literally be something that anytime someone comes to you, and it, like it's almost like someone coming to you and saying, you know, Amy, your eyes are really purple today. You'd be like, you are crazy. Like, what are you talking about? My eyes are not purple. And so it becomes true for you. Yes. And once you hit that level, it doesn't matter what anybody else says. I love that. And I feel like that wraps right into, you know, that unshakable why. I feel like finding that belief and flexing that belief muscle and all of those things are so, 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 so important. So you guys make sure that you definitely hop in, take full advantage of Brooke's free gift, go give her some love and some follows over on social media. You definitely won't regret it. She's amazing. And if you just, if you're ever just feeling kind of low vibe, definitely go give her a follow and uh, she'll bring you right back up. Mm. I love compliments. I love that so much. Thank you. Thank you for having me. That was so much fun. Um, yeah. You guys reach out to me if you have a takeaway or anything. I love hearing from people and I read all of my messages. So thank you so, so much. This has been a blast.